There are three key attributes of a product cost. The costs incurred in purchasing and getting the stock into, a location and a condition ready for sale that can be accurately and logically attributed to an individual stock item. Your classic one being purchase price of the stock itself. Period costs are also incurred in getting the stock into a location and condition ready for sale, but they cannot be logically allocated to an individual stock item. For instance, freight on a variety of stock items. In terms of evaluating the impact on profit of product versus period costing, it depends. Because if all the stock items have been sold during the period, then there's no difference because any cost incurred in getting the stock into a condition and or location ready for sale has been fully expensed regardless of the method used. If not all units have been sold during the period, that's when we get a discrepancy. So under the period technique, all costs have been fully expensed regardless of whether the items have been sold or not. Under the product method, well it only expenses the costs associated with the items sold. Any items unsold are yet to be expensed. So therefore, using the product method, we get a lower cost of goods sold figure and hence a higher GP and net profit. The product costing technique provides a more accurate measure of cost of goods sold because it only expenses the items that have been consumed in generating sales. So therefore we get a more accurate profit, we get a more accurate value of our stock on hand in terms of the future economic benefit that it provides. So thus we satisfy the relevance QC. So when determining if a cost incurred is a product or period cost or neither, ask yourself these questions. Is the cost incurred in getting the stock into a condition and location ready for sale? If the answer is no, it's neither a product or period cost and that cost will be expensed separately after we've calculated the gross or adjusted gross profit. If the answer is yes, it's either a product or period cost. So the next question is, can the cost incurred be logically allocated to an individual stock item? If the answer to that question is no, then it is a period cost. If the cost can be logically allocated to an individual item, it's a product cost.